Okay, let's see, move over. So um, we're talking now about the syntax of the use of comparatives and superlatives. That is how they work in sentences. Okay, um, and um, and basically there there are, there are two alternatives. One is the way we do it exactly like the way we do it in English. That is when you have when you're comparing two things with a comparative adjective, you say x is better than y, and and the rule the rule that that in, in English grammar is that the x and the y are always in the same case, okay? So you, you could say x is better than y. The way I learned it in school was x is better than y is, mm. okay? Since x is in the nominative case, it's the subject of the sentence, so is y going to be, because it's implicitly the subject of the sentence. But it, it's really that they are comparable and being compared, so they have to be in the same case. So that's the example we put up on uh, that that has written on the whiteboard, blackboard. Socrates, that's the nominative of Socrates' name. Sopho te ras estin, that estin, remember, means he, she, or it is. And sopho te ras means wiser, okay? Socrates is wiser. And then we have this word, a new word for than, a, eh. okay? It's an eta with a smooth breathing and an acute accent, which has become grav because it's at the end of the word. It's going to always be grav, right? Except if there's an enclitic after it. But anyhow, it's Socrates is wiser, and that word means than, a. Eh? And then the next word is Aristophanes, the same gender, a number, and case. Well, at least this, what's important is it's the same case as Socrates. Usually you don't compare things that are different in number. You don't compare an, an, one apple with a bunch of oranges, but anything's possible. It's the, but the important thing is not the number, um, but the case of the two nouns that are being compared. So they have to be grammatically the same. If we, if this was an indirect sentence, okay, and we had a sentence that said, we thought Socrates was wiser than Aristophanes, then Socrates would be the subject of an indirect sentence, and he'd be in the accusative case. So would Aristophanes, because Aristophanes has to agree with Socrates in that sentence. All right, so this is the way we do it in English, okay? The two things being compared on either side of the comparative adjective go in the same case, and you have the word than. But Greek has another thing that you can do, and an alternative, and there's no rule about which is better or worse. Some authors in some situations prefer one or some the other. Mm -hmm. And the rule is this. You can, even in the sentence given above, leave out the word than, eh, okay, and put the second term being compared, in our sentence it's Aristophanes, and put him in the genitive case. So then you have Socrates, Sophoteros estin, no, uh, no word for than, Aristophanus, the genitive of Aristophanes. You put in the, the, the compared word in the genitive, what's the logic of that? Well, do you remember from the be beginning, what, what, are the, what, are the, what do we say was the standard function of the genitive? It's separation, right? So adjective prepositions that mean away from or out of take the to govern a noun in the in the genitive case, right? So here, what you're saying that the reason you're using the comparative without an adjective is that it expresses the distinction, if you will, between Socrates and Aristophanes. What's different about them, right? Is about and so since it's distinction, it's the notion of separation comes in. Right, mm -hmm. and that's why you have genitives in these cases because that's the basic function of the genitive. We think of it as being of, mm -hmm. but the of is really an extension of the idea of out of and away from. Oh. Right? Okay. So, so the, the so that's the rule. Whatever is going on, if you have the word then a, then the second member of the comparison has to be in the same case as the first one. Right? The school moms who point fingers at people tell you. She is better than I is what you're supposed to say. Nobody says that anymore. She's better than me. That's a that's a, an interesting kind of grammatical error. But it should be, and in Greek it would be I. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, in Greek, the the things that make English speakers put me want to put me there aren't in play. Okay. Um, that's that's the basic construction with comparatives. There's one other feature that the book tells you about and that we use in regular par parlance 
you say sentences like Socrates is wiser than Aristophanes, or you also say things like Socrates is a little wiser than Aristophanes. So what is a little in that sentence? Well, it's a it's a kind of adjective that is modifying. It's a kind, it's a word that's modifying wiser, right? So it's an adjective modifying another adjective. In other words, it's an adverb. Okay. So uh, how do you how do you do adverbs with adjectives? Well, in this case, the what Greek did is put the the a little that qualifies wiser in the dative case. So you have what's called the dative of degree of difference. So a lot wiser, a little wiser, it really doesn't, you would think that that would matter, but the construction is the same for both, okay? We put the word for a lot, which is a form of polus and neuter, in the dative case, right? And if it's a little, it would be micro, the word for a little is in this lesson. Okay, um, when it comes to the superlative, there are two things to learn. One is that you know, there's the superlative, that sort of everyday uh, vanilla flavored superlative. Socrates is the best of men, okay? Mm -hmm. um, in which of men is the is a part of genitive, is the genitive of the whole. Remember the piece of pie genitive, but uh, there's nothing there's nothing uh, especially co peculiar about that. But it, it's it's a common construction with the to have the the, the whole of which somebody who's superior is a part, um, go in the genitive case. Yes. Socrates is, um, is the wisest of men. But the other thing that you can do with superlatives is make them into absolutes, okay? It's very interesting the way this works, it, uh, but what Greek has, can, if, if, in Greek you can put the, the um, adverb hos or hoti in front of superlative adjective, like best, hos best and haughty best, means as good as possible, okay, or or as bad as possible. Example, uh, you can do hos axiotatos, as worthy as po as as possible, okay, haughty axiotatos, most worthy as possible. Um, something like that kind of translation is in effect, but whatever it is, the idea is there's nothing more uh, worthwhile or whatever it, 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 the trait expressed by the adjective is. Mm -hmm. So it's the, the, the limit and a useful concept. Okay. Sounds good.